Good day, everyone. We're back with the latest Asian news, and here they are. Jakarta's workers cleaning debris after violence related to new jobs law. Jakarta began clean up after it erupted in the Indonesian capital city because of health strike protests against polarizing new jobs law, where it's damaged facility and burned in nationwide. Semangat gue jadi down, jujur. Karena Honestly, I feel down because I want to look for a job, then a law like this is implemented. I'm not happy about it. And secondly, for me, the motivation for seeking job is lowered because of this law. Thousands have taken to the streets of cities across Indonesia in the past three days, part of protest and national strikes against the law they say undermines labor rights and weakens environmental protections. I feel a sense of loss. If they want to protest, do it in the right way. Do not behave like an anarchist. This is a public transportation. By damaging it, makes our lives difficult. Aren't the protesters targeting the government? So please don't damage the public transport that belongs to all of us. At the same time, the governor of Jakarta says he informs Indonesian President Joko Widodo of the protest demands as the growing number of regional leaders opposes the new legislation. Uh, yesterday I also met with the uh, protesters and we had a brief discussions with them and I told them that uh, we have listened to your voice and I will convey the message. In this violent protest, Jakarta police detained about 1,000 demonstrators, while hundreds are arrested in other cities. During pandemic, Manila's teachers teach students through online. Manila's teachers set up call centers to help students and to make sure don't fall behind their online studies during the coronavirus pandemic. The national government mandating virtual classes for students in schools across the country, albeit online. According to the program team leader, Ferdinand Delgado, the center opened in a local school auditorium with 70 teachers from both public and private schools. This program already fielding more than 700 calls. Quality education must continue. Just because there is an ongoing pandemic, the quality of learning shouldn't suffer. This program was made to strengthen the government's efforts to help students with their education. A senior high math teacher says this program is very important to help students during the strike situation. This program is very important for the students because they cannot always easily reach out to their school teachers for inquiries. More often than not, parents are also unsure about the lessons given to the students and are unable to help them. Students call Facebook Messenger or email teachers during weekdays between 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. local time. In addition, Filipino President Rodrigo Duterte says during pandemic he will not allow face-to-face -face classes until a vaccine becomes available. And because of partial coronavirus restrictions around the world, Philippines will be extended until October 31st to keep the spread of COVID-19. The Philippine Health Department has recorded a total of 331,869 coronavirus cases with 6,069 deaths. United States detains a Singaporean that becomes China's spine. The Department of Justice says Jun Wei Yeo, a 39-year-old academic, is sentenced to 40 months in prison in a United States court for acting as an illegal agent of Chinese intelligence. Court documents show Yeo was lured into becoming a Chinese asset while attending a forum in Beijing to give a presentation on Southeast Asian politics. He moved to the United States in January 2019 and was arrested by United States authorities in November. This case reawakened fears over China recruiting intelligence assets on an island state which win trust among Western governments while keeping on good terms with Beijing. At least 20 deaths as the impact of an accident of bus and train collided in Thailand. A bus heading to a Buddhist temple collided with a train in central Thailand, at least 20 deaths and injuring 30 people. 
Maitre Tritilanon, governor of Chachua in South Province, says the accident took place at 5 past 8 a.m. near the Klong Clan railway station, 63 kilometers. TV footage from local networks shows the impact of the crash flipped the bus on its side, ripping off the top, but the train did not rerail, and metal scattered around the accident area and rescue workers at the site. The governor said the crossing has an alarm, but no barrier to block traffic from trains that are passing. He said the province will install speed bumps and barriers also cut down trees near the crossing to improve visibility. According to WHO, Thalens Road ranked among the world's deadliest. There has been little improvement despite safety campaigns over the years. Floods in Vietnam kill 17 people and 13 others disappear. State media says at least 17 people killed by floods in Vietnam's central provinces and 13 are still missing. According to a government report, floods have cut food supplies to thousands of people, around 31,000 people displaced and more than 33,000 houses submerged and damaged by floods. Footage broadcast by VTV show fishermen being rescued by Coast Guard and helicopters as strong winds batters the central Vietnamese coast in the central province of Quang Tri. A state broadcaster Vietnam Television reports the central region should be prepared for another typhoon Linfa, which will bring more rains and result in more flooding. So far, the natural disasters in Vietnam that predominantly floods and landslides triggered by storms killed 132 people and injured 207 others. Japanese taxis deliver food to people amid COVID-19 epidemic. Japan's white-gloved taxi drivers are delivering takeaway instead of passengers, thanks to the relaxed rules meant to support the sector amid the COVID-19 epidemic. Japan's Transport Ministry extends indefinitely measures that allow taxis to deliver not only people, but hot food and drinks, also similar to other delivery services. Nakagawa Rin, a taxi driver, says it's just one of thousands of taxi drivers who now transport food orders. The number of passengers per day is probably less than half of that before the outbreak. Now I can deliver meals when there are no customers, and I feel my income is more secured. The publicity department or taxi operator says the measure is to prevent COVID-19 disease transmission and they also have planning to cooperate with restaurants. By participating in new services, such as food delivery, the company began to see some signs of recovery in revenue, which has now rebounded to roughly 70 to 80 percent of the revenue prior to the epidemic. We are also planning to cooperate with restaurants to provide new services. More than 1,700 taxi companies, accounting for a quarter of Japan's total taxi operators, had obtained the special licenses. Taxi operator says the rate for taxi delivered food can reach over 2,000 yen or about US dollar 20. Farmers began harvest rice in parts of China. In China's Shandong province, farmers are using agriculture machinery to harvest the 200,000 hectares of soybeans. The yield per hectare is around 4,500 kilograms, and the price is 5 yuan, about 75 cent US dollars per kilogram. So the net income for each hectare is over 22,500 yuan, or equal to 3,400 US dollars. Local authorities have been promoting crop rotation of wheat and soybeans in the region over recent years, achieving steady growth in output. From planting to using planes to spray pesticides and harvesting, we have realized mechanization of the whole process of unified farming. Meanwhile, the farmers in Shanbei village of Gezupin town in Huayuhua city of central China's Hunan province began harvesting rice using human labor in a traditional way. In efforts to improve sales for the farmers, the local government has established cooperative in cooperation with enterprises and have had the sales affairs managed by the enterprises. In order to ensure the continued good harvest and at the same time stability of sale prices for the farmers, 
we have set the price of rice at over 3,600 yuan or about 540 US dollars per ton, which is an increase of more than 800 yuan, about 120 US dollars per ton over previous years. One year, Bean and rice farmers in East and Central China are enjoying bumper harvest of crops as it now the golden autumn harvest season of the year in China. Konain believes that religion can protect him from COVID-19. Konain as a taxi driver says he don't fearful of coronavirus epidemic because he trusts in religion. It will protect him from the virus. Coronavirus is global epidemic which is quickly transmitted from people to people through speak and saliva with symptoms such as cough, have a fever, sneeze and puff. I'm not scared of the virus because I feel protected by my religion and regular praying at the pagoda. He firmly believes his pity prevents him from financial and other troubles due to the coronavirus. Since the first wave of infection, other people have had difficulty going about their jobs while I earn a regular income. People are in trouble, but I'm not, because I believe in my religion and Buddha. Meanwhile, the country's leader Aung San Suu Kyi calls on the public to get behind the effort to fight the virus. The number of COVID-19 infections in Myanmar has surged more than 26,000 cases and 598 deaths. Myanmar's biggest city is under lockdown as new cases of coronavirus reach record levels and all citizens stay at home to stop the virus from spreading. Myanmar is also expecting its general election on November 8. Aung San Suu Kyi have says must go ahead and is more important than COVID-19. China and Cambodia signed first bilateral free trade agreement. The deal are inks virtually between Cambodian Commerce Minister Pan Sorasak and Chinese Commerce Minister Zongshang under the presence of Cambodian Prime Minister Samdek Teko Hun Seng and visiting Chinese State Councillor and Foreign Minister Wang Yi. The score principal from this agreement covers sectors that include trade, tourism and agriculture under which both countries will cut duties for their products. Signing of this agreement signifies an even stronger tie between the two countries and marks another key historical milestone for Cambodia-China relations. Undoubtedly, the agreement would provide a more robust economic partnership through, through higher degree of market access, liberal, liberalizations for goods, services and investments. There were no details provided about the agreement, how it will work, existing trade arrangement between China and ASEAN, of which Cambodia is a member. Depending on its terms, the deal could be a boost for Cambodia, which suffered the suspension last year of part of its special trade preferences with the European Union, a key market for its export over human rights concern. Cambodia, which is among Asia's poorest countries, has been an important ally to China in recent years. From these good relations, Cambodia has been accused of giving it de facto veto power in Asia's consensus-based decision-making process in return from economic report. Cambodia rejects that and insisted its foreign policy is not under China's influence. WHO says China and 180 countries effort to finance COVID-19 vaccines. Chief scientist of the World Health Organization at the news conference says more than 180 countries, including China, have committed to participate in the WHO's efforts to finance COVID-19 vaccines to be distributed fairly to both rich and poor countries. The COVAX facility is going from strength to strength. Um, October 9th was another deadline for countries to make uh, commitments. And at, um, over the weekend, we have over 180 countries that have committed. Uh, these include the self-financing countries and the latest one to join and make a public announcement was China. And then you have the 92 AMC countries, which will uh, be eligible for uh, Gavi's support for the vaccines. So actually, when you add up all of these countries together, it, they represent 90% of the world's population. So 
it looks like the COVAX facilities really brought countries and people together. And um, it sets a good example for, for believing in and trying to achieve equitable access uh, of vaccines. Meanwhile, Director General of the WHO says nowadays they're seeking the number of the coronavirus that increases every day, especially in Europe and America. We're now seeing an increase in the number of reported cases of COVID-19, especially in Europe and the Americas. Each of the last four days has been the highest number of cases reported so far. Many cities and countries are also reporting an increase in hospitalizations and intensive care bed occupancy. We must remember that this is an uneven pandemic. Countries have responded differently and countries have been affected differently. Almost 70% of all cases reported globally last week were from 10 countries and almost Half of all cases were from just three countries. The Gavi Vaccine Alliance announces that 170 countries, which is working with the WHO and the COVAX financing facility. According to Reuters, more than 37.58 million people have been reported to be infected by the novel coronavirus globally and 1,077,020 have died. Infections have been reported in more than 210 countries and territories since the first cases were identified in China in December 2019. And that's all for today. Enjoy your weekend and we'll see you again.